Christ's peace to you, my friends. As a child, I was not a fan of having to have my hair cut. But thankfully, the barber shop that my dad would take my brothers and I to had some distractions that helped me pass the time. In that barber shop, they had a wall of mirrors both in front of the chairs and behind the chairs. So it actually created an effect where I could see my reflection in the mirror as I sat in the chair, but in that reflection, I would then see another further reflection of myself in the chair, and then a further reflection, and a further reflection, and a further reflection until it got to be, just really seemed like to go on to infinity. Of course, it's a cool effect that you can have with mirrors, and, and for me, it helped me kind of pass the time away as I was in a chair and to be distracted. And as I looked at that image of myself, I would often play games uh, to kind of help pass the time away. I would often think about, well, which of those images is the real me? And I would begin to look at each of those images and try to figure out which is the real one. And even, I would even compare things that I would see. Is this you know, chair reflected in each and every image? Is this brush or comb? that I see, can that also be reflected in each of the images to try to discern if there might be a fake image or not? It, it, obviously a child's game, but it, it helped me to, as I said, pass the time away. But it created an interesting dynamic of trying to figure out what's real and, and what's an illusion. Uh, what, which is the real me and which one is not? And, and today we celebrate the Feast of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ, or what, was tradition, or what is tradition called Corpus Christi, where we celebrate the great gift that Jesus gave us, which is the gift of his very self, his body and blood, which he gave us, of course, at the Last Supper, and which we celebrate each and every time that we come to Mass, and we partake of this body and blood every time we come to communion. And then, of course, there are other devotions attached to this sacrament that we celebrate and we uh, enter into the mystery of the body and blood of Christ. One of those ways that we do that is through the, the blessings, through the adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, uh, through either a Eucharistic processions or through uh, things like holy hours and so forth, we have this. And, and to do that, churches uh, place a consecrated host into a monstrance, which is a receptacle to hold the Blessed Sacrament. And here at St. Andrew, we have a very beautiful monstrance which is right behind me, as you can see. And perhaps if you've ever been to a holy hour here or you've come to a, a service where we've had benediction, you've, you've been able to see it. It's very beautiful, of course, with, with gold and silver accents and a few gemstones and so forth. And, and even as a child, I remember uh, kind of being amazed uh, with the monstrance that my home parish had because it was actually a little bit larger than this one and it was bedecked with all kinds of jewels and colorful enamels. And I found myself as a child uh, just kind of contemplating, not, not the Eucharist, unfortunately, but again, all the little details and the monstrance. And, uh, you know, I, I think that's, that's an experience I think that sometimes happens even as adults. If you travel through Europe, you will see the beautiful monstrances that they also use for their Eucharistic adoration and, and devotions. And with the great cathedrals of, of Europe, uh, they often have these monstrances that are actually larger than life. Uh, they usually have to have like six uh, people actually carry them on, on, a, on a pedestal as they walk it through the streets. So the host is really small, but then you have this really large, like six to ten foot large monstrance that, uh, you know, with, again, filled with all kinds of precious metals and, and, and gemstones that it's easy to become overwhelmed by the beauty of the monstrance and lose sight of the true beauty, which is in the Eucharist. And, and I think today's feast helps us to focus on, again, the great gift that Jesus uh, bestowed upon us. It's important for us to kind of consider this, especially as we know uh, through Pew surveys that, uh, that the belief in the true presence of Jesus in the Eucharist is declining. Uh, many Catholics do not believe this to be the actual, true presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, but maybe think of it as more symbolic. And the church, of course, is rightly concerned about that. And so I think on this feast day, we are invited to really kind of challenge ourselves and to 
Do we truly believe that this is Jesus present in the Eucharist, whether it be as displayed in a monstrance or, again, the Eucharist that we receive every Sunday or when we come to church? But in terms of the Corpus Christi and the Feast of the Body and Blood of Christ that we celebrate today, my friends, there is another dimension that we all always have to kind of keep in mind as well, too, which is that not only is the Blessed Sacrament the body and blood of Christ, but we, too, are the body and blood of Christ. St. Paul reminds us of that, especially in his letter to the Corinthians, that we are all members of the body of Christ, each of the members making up part of that body of Christ. And that we also have to recognize that, that all of us make up this body of Christ, along with recognizing the Eucharist that we celebrate. St. Augustine uh, made this very clear in his sermon, Sermon 272. And, and this is what he says. He says, if you want to understand the body of Christ, listen to the apostle, referring to St. Paul. He says, listen to the apostle telling the faithful, you, though, are the body of Christ and its members. So if it is you that are the body of Christ, it's the mystery, meaning you, that has been placed on the Lord's table. So be a member of the body of Christ in order to make your amen true. It's a wonderful reminder that St. Augustine says to us that in order to understand the mystery of the Eucharist, we have to also understand the mystery of ourselves being the body of Christ and that we as well are placed on the altar with the same host, the same consecrated Eucharist. We all are part of the body of Christ. He even goes a little further actually to help us to understand this. He talks about the actual elements that are used to uh, confect or to make the, the body and blood of Christ, which is the bread and the wine. And, and St. Augustine, in that same sermon, talks about how the bread is composed of, of wheat, of various grains of wheat, all of them uh, mixed in together into the dough to make the bread. And he says the same thing about the wine, that the wine is made up of all the various grapes from each of the bunches that go into making the wine. Another symbol, again, of how all of those elements are uh, indicative of the, the body of Christ that we are, that we all are come together uh, to be part of this great mystery, which, of course, is then transformed at the Mass. He, he takes it, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, he says, um, he calls us to be of one soul, to be of one heart in God in this sacrament to recognize that we are called to be one and to be united with each other and with Christ. Unfortunately, my friends, I think there's a lot of disunity in our world and even in our church. And I think we've kind of ourselves into a difficult situation sometimes that we, we've kind of gotten caught up with, you know, distinctions of who is a faithful Catholic and who is not. You know, who is worthy of receiving communion and who is not? You know, whose lives are worthy of a blessing and whose lives are not? Unfortunately, what all of that does is create a sense of division and confusion in our faith lives, which go against the very nature of what this blessed sacrament, what this mystery is all about. I think it's no wonder then that there is so much confusion and doubt about the true presence in the Eucharist. Because if we're going to start questioning the worthiness of people receiving communion, of who should receive and who should not, again, whose lives are holy and whose lives are not, once we start breaking down uh, you know, the body of Christ that we are, uh, then I think the body of Christ, as is understood in the Blessed Sacrament, will also suffer. It's no accident. And so, my friends, I think for us the challenge is a dual challenge. The challenge to really understand 
the Eucharist as the true presence of Christ, and to understand we, all of us, regardless of who we are, of how we live our lives, are members of the body of Christ. And to do violence to either one or the other is going to affect the other as well. In, in essence, once we start playing around with those realities and questioning those things, quite literally, we find ourselves as if we are in a house of mirrors, unable to discern truly what is real and what is not.